Greetings, beautiful earthlings. My name is Star. If you are new here, I don't know how you found me, but I am super grateful to have you. And if you are returning, y'all, the real MVP, you already know. I just want to say, first off, my friends, um, if you saw my last video about, you know, protections and warding, um, I'm really sorry you guys did kind of catch a like heated emotional side of me. There was something that had been said that kind of struck a nerve and just kind of in the throes of passion, I made a video about it. And um, usually I don't do that. Usually I'm very level headed. And if I'm not sure about a video, I just won't post it. That didn't happen. So I want to say thank you very much to the people in my comment section who actually came at me and told me to to check my vibes and kind of reword everything that I was saying. So we're going to do a take two on that video. We're going to adjust the tone a little bit and make it more informative the way that I would normally make a video. And I want to preface this by saying these are my personal opinions. I never thought that I would have to say that because clearly it is my channel. But um, I guess some people don't understand that not everything that I say when I come with such an authoritative tone is just me speaking passionately about my personal opinions okay so we're gonna start over fresh today and say uh, this is my personal opinion on these things that i'm going to be talking about clearly it is okay if you don't agree with me it is okay if you do your practice differently everyone does their practice differently um, you know everyone is entitled to their opinions on what they think about what they should and shouldn't do in their magic practice and i am a normal human just like you guys and there is no reason that I should be speaking more authoritatively on something that I am also doing side by side with all of you. So um, what I want to start by saying is that I personally believe that if you are doing anything within the realm of divination and magic that you should protect and ward yourself and your house. Now I feel like that got a little bit misconstrued um, the way that I was talking about it because I didn't explain what I meant by any of that. So um, I, I feel that most practitioners of any uh, level have protections about their house already in place, whether it be um, plants, statues, um, like iconography, um, you know, protection jars, crystals, um, besoms, anything like that. All of those things are under the umbrella of protections. Protections can even be as small as things like what I am wearing. My veil is a protection to keep out negative and lower vibrational energy from being absorbed into myself. Um, my earrings are also charmed for the same intent to work with the veil and kind of make a little um, you know, bubble around me. And then I do have, you know, black tourmaline and a labradorite crystal down here. Same thing, those are protective crystals. I do also wear the uh, seal of the archangels as well as a cross over here. And then, as you guys can tell, I do have my onk here. I have black tourmaline and selenite. I have, you know, a clear quartz here. These have all been charmed with specific intent as well. So, protections can be any tiny little trinket anything can be even as small as a rock um, you know a pen a piece of clothing anything that you have the intent of protecting you from any type of negative energies so even if you were gifted something um, you know by a family member say like a, a cross or something or a little statue of an angel or um, something like a picture of an ancestor or something like that and they said something as small as this will protect you that is charging that item with intent of protection and therefore that is a protection that you now have in place over your spiritual self Okay, so that's what I mean by protections. What I mean by wards are more extreme protections that one would place about the house. So normally very actively practicing witches would already put wards up in place because not only do you not want to attract something unwanted to your practice that might mess with your spell work or something like that, but in the event like a really pissed off witch decides to try to hex you or something, you would like to have a force field around yourself and your house and your family. Um, you know, to keep everybody safe and to reflect that hex or whatever. So I personally do have tons and tons of wards about my house. They are very, um, very small, very uh, non 
flamboyant type of warts. So I did make something with like Florida water and salt and a bunch of herbs and I made a special prayer for it while I was mixing it, while I was doing that with my intent. And then I went about the house and I drew sigils on every single door, every single window, every single closet, every single mirror, every single corner of the house, everything and anything that I felt needed a tiny little um, type of wart. So something that small can be a wart. It can be something very out there if you are not a closeted witch and you have, you know, either your own place or very welcoming people in your house and you can draw sigils on the, on, you know, things with, you know, cascaria chalk or, you know, ashes of Palo Santo or whatever, things like that. You might even have, you know, statues up in place of like gargoyles and dragons and things like that and like, you know, samurais and whatever. Um, a lot of people will have these things about without even realizing that they do that with having protection in mind. I know my mom has tons of them all over the house. She has samurais, elephants, dragons, all kinds of things. I have bats all over my room for the same purpose, just kind of like a scary gargoyle type of sitting spirit thing. So um, when I made that video, I made it with the intention of it reaching brand new beginners that were just starting to dabble in the realm of divination because as you guys know, my channel is tarot and divination focused for brand new beginners. So we do just kind of touch on a lot of subjects here and there. I don't go into depth of a lot of them. Um, I feel that a lot of beginners to tarot and divination will eventually somewhere down the line find themselves interested in some form of witchcraft, okay? That is not to say that everyone will. That is not to say that if you are a tarot reader, you have to be a witch. They are non-exclusive. You do not have to be a practicing witch to be a tarot reader. You do not have to be a tarot reader to be a practicing witch, okay? So if you are a tarot reader and you just do it to learn about the tarot cards and the history and the craft and the, you know, uh, the magic around self-improvement and things like that, maybe this doesn't quite resonate for you, okay? But if you are someone who is a practicing witch or, you know, a spiritual practitioner of any sort and you use tarot to reach out to, say, deities, ancestors, spirits, um, anything else outside of yourself, outside of this realm, outside of just your higher self, um, even just trying to speak with angels and things like that. I feel personally that you should have protections in place. You should have wards in place if you are planning to pursue that type of divination. Again, same thing, uh, this is what I was talking about as well with like a pendulum, a scrying ball or mirror or, you know, scrying bowl or uh, spirit board, things like that. If you are just using them for shits and giggles and you don't really intend on doing anything, maybe, again, you don't want to set up protections because you don't really believe in it and that's fine. But if you are doing these things, again, with the intent of reaching out to an entity outside of yourself for communication purposes, for magic, for spell work, for divination, um, for either yourself or clients, I do feel that it is imperative for you to have protections about. Now, I do not feel that it is imperative to have protections about out of fear. I feel like it is just kind of common sense if you are doing avid practicing magic. Uh, this is something I did not make up myself. This is something I have gotten from multitudes of older practicing witches before me. This is where I got all of this information. You guys know um, if you've been around my channel for a long time that I was a moderator for a very big witchcraft group when I first started my channel. That is where I learned a lot of this and since I am no longer a part of that group I have also found resources like Marshall the Witch of Southern Light, Olivia the Witch of Wanderlust, um, <clears throat> Frankie the Chaotic Witch Aunt, on YouTube and TikTok, um, as well as Francisco, the Wicked Witch of LA. All of these people are within this community that have 
tons of great resources, tons of great research, and tons of great knowledge on why you should be doing these types of protections uh, for any type of deity work, spirit communication, etc. Um, if that is your intent. So that is what I meant um, with that video. I know I wasn't very clear with any of that. I know that I wasn't very <laughs> informative in the way that I was speaking. And, you know, I just wanted to reach out to beginners that might just be kind of sticking their toes into tarot or pendulum work or spirit board work. Because again, personally, I have found that not many uh, young witchlings will step into one thing without being curious of another. So that's why I feel it's so important to put about protections and wards and things like that. Because if you know that you are going to be curious about something and one divination will lead to another divination, will lead to another divination, will lead to some dabbling and some spell work, will lead to some deity work, things like that. Once you feel yourself kind of going down that realm, maybe that's when you would start thinking about maybe I should start putting up protections. Maybe I should get some protective crystals. Maybe I should put, you know, protective. Again, everyday things that we have around our house can serve for protection that we don't even realize we have around for protection, but they themselves do realize they are there for protection, like your plants and your pets they know that they are there for protection of you, your energy, your household. Think about your dogs, think about your cats, they know that they are there for protection. If you have any smaller animals like birds or bunnies or guinea pigs or lizards or things like that, they might be around you when you're doing your magic and divination work um, because they are drawn to the energy. They want to lend you their energy for the work as well. Um, again, this is something that some beginners might not notice right away. They might not understand. They might not uh, catch on to even for a couple of years just because this isn't something that older practicing witches talk much about. There is a lot of gatekeeping that goes on in the community and they don't want to tell their secrets. There is this very big um, bubble around the older witchcraft communities about how practice is personal. Um, you know, we're not going to share our secrets, things like that. That's totally okay. And yes, practice should be personal. No, you shouldn't share all of your secrets. Like I told you guys, these are charmed. These are charmed. I didn't tell you how I charmed them. I didn't tell you what I used. I didn't tell you my specific prayers, my specific intentions, things like that. I didn't tell you what I put on this or how I cleanse it, things like that. But, um, if you have made it this far in the video and you still don't think that you need protections at this point in time, I would suggest looking into energy cleansing of yourself and your space. It, even if you're just doing tarot, um, this is why I have uh, gone so far as to create my beginner tarot kit. If you guys have never seen my Etsy shop, um, all of my jewelry is charmed for protection. All of my um, tarot kits, are beginner tarot kits. They come with a tarot deck. I promise this isn't an ad. There, there's a reason for what I'm saying. They come with a tarot deck, sage, palo santo, incense, black candles, black tourmaline, and selenite, and a protective charm of your choice. And that is all because I don't want any beginners to start dabbling in tarot. Um, with the intent of just reaching out to their higher self and kind of tripping across um, an entity one day or a deity or somebody that wants to talk to them because a lot of us that are drawn to divination and spirit work are very intuitively gifted already. We realize that that's why we're drawn to these things. And yes, you may kind of just trip over some entities someday. They might just kind of appear in your space and you're like, oh, hey, what's up? I'll talk to you because you're here. I can hear you. We can communicate, things like that. So that is why I feel it's important to have even the tiniest bit of protections, even just wearing, you know, a crystal, a, a cross, an amulet, uh, something that's important to you and your, your practice, your religious practice, your pantheon of your deity, whatever. There is always always reason in my opinion to have small types of protections around you around the people that you love and around your space and your home and your pets and your plants and things like that um, just because 
when you're dipping your toes in the realm of divination and magic, you never know where that will lead you. You never know where you will find yourself interested in the next couple of years. And doing things like warding your house the way I had talked about, you know, drawing sigils on everything, that doesn't have to be done every single day. That doesn't have to be done every time that you pull out your tarot cards. Uh, so no, I wasn't insinuating that every time you pull out your tarot cards, you have to stop and ward your entire house and, you know, draw a whole circle and all of those things. But if doing something like tarot is starting to make you nervous, if you are a beginner, I have had this come uh, to my attention quite a few times where beginners have said it's starting to make them nervous, they're starting to hear things from other people. You have to understand that the mind is the most powerful tool and that's what feeds these egregores of energy. If you are hearing, you know, that you're, you're bringing in evil energies and things like that, yes, you are going to get fed that in your head. You're going to start feeding that egregore. You're going to start making it bigger than it is. Uh, so that's why it's so important for you to just like be confident in knowing I've got my protections, I cleansed my energy, everything's fine, I don't have to worry about that, there's no reason for me to be freaking out about it. But if you, again, if you're a beginner and this is starting to come to the forefront of your mind that you think maybe you should start looking into protections, maybe you should start learning about cleansing your energy, I definitely think that it would serve you well to do so. You can start on very easy things like Pinterest and YouTube and just start looking, you know, down the rabbit hole, um, learning about cleansing of any type will really help, whether it be smoke cleansing with incense, sage, palo santo, rosemary, cedar, any type of smudge bundle item you would like. If you are not in a position to smoke cleanse, you can do things like intent cleansing, saying, you know, I, I cleanse this space of negative energy and envision a uh, white light around it, or, you know, ask your deities and ask your entities for their help uh, lending you their energy for cleansing of this space or if you don't feel quite safe when you are learning tarot doing something as small as casting a circle will help you feel safer i used to do that when i first started tarot as well because i was just like you guys i got gifted a tarot deck i didn't really know what i was doing i was looking at it i was playing with it i started learning more about it i started really getting into a bunch of things and then i was like oh my gosh what am i getting into so that's why i made it a point to try to make this video to reach out to the beginners that may be where i was a couple of years ago not having any idea where to start okay so even doing something as small as casting a circle will help you when you're doing your tarot practice so if you guys don't know how to cast a circle i literally found the circle casting chant spell thing on pinterest okay like there's anything and everything you can think of in the realm of witchcraft runes sigils all of that can be found on pinterest okay all of that can be found on youtube all of that can be found on tiktok it just takes a lot of digging to do it on tiktok but you can find it okay and if you guys feel like you don't have any resources i would highly suggest joining uh facebook groups however please understand facebook groups uh like the uh <clears throat> not the old group that i was in there is a new group that i am in now called wicca witchcraft for beginners um it is again it's open to everybody as long as you're practicing or you know thinking about practicing and things like that so you have to understand there are people of all pantheons of all religions of all practices of all levels in that group um so yes it does say for beginners but you will get a lot of seasoned people in there that will kind of sneak in for gatekeeping purposes or for uh you know different things so you you do kind of have to be careful i would suggest going into those groups maybe with a friend if you have a friend that practices these things with you guys um, or maybe even just kind of stick to doing your research uh, getting a bunch of books watching tiktoks watching youtubes things like that first before you jump into a group like a facebook group because it will help you get kind of a comfortable base knowledge of what it is you're talking about what questions you may have before you go seeking them in a facebook group because in a facebook group uh, like the one i was in you'll kind of just get a million 
off the wall questions with a million off the wall answers sometimes and only a couple of them are really helpful so i find it's better to just err on the side of caution with those groups but you know again if you don't have friends or family or anybody that's practicing that can do these things with you that's a good resource to have you just you know have to kind of use your common sense with the things that you're you're learning and you're asking and you're picking up in there uh, because like i said i learned a lot in that group i did i learned a whole lot but it did take a whole lot of digging and sifting and you know uh asking and and referencing and things like that and uh when things will come up in those groups you kind of have to do your own research to fact check the things that have been said because there are so many resources of free books online with all of this information. I'm sure um, if you go to thrift stores, you'll find some of these books. You can go to used bookstores, things like that, if you do not have the money to like purchase them off of Amazon. Um, but any you know practicing witch that you will find on TikTok or YouTube will most likely have videos about books that they have um, for reference that will help you guys. And the more you start dabbling into, you know, what it is you want to do with, with divination, with witchcraft, if you decide you don't want anything to do with witchcraft or deity work or any of those things, you just want to be by yourself doing tarot with your higher self, that's completely okay. And you never, ever, ever have to touch witchcraft a day in your life. But if you do decide that you want to start dabbling in a million little things in witchcraft, which will lead to bigger practices in witchcraft, I definitely recommend finding some very good resources, finding some very trustworthy people that you really resonate with on the internet. Um, you know, in the realm of YouTube, in the realm of TikTok, whatever it may be, um, even in your area, you may find that you have a coven or you, you know, have some practicing witches that are around and you can probably find them lingering around at metaphysical shops, to be completely honest. I always meet tons of amazing, like-minded spiritual people at metaphysical shops. So um, I hope that this cleared some things up for those of you guys who did see that video that I made. Again, I apologize. I do get very passionate, especially when it's um, something that kind of hits a nerve and I'm kind of just steaming on it for a little while so that's what I did I made a video out of the throes of passion out of emotion and that's kind of why it turned into a giant dumpster fire so I tell you guys this all the time you're more than welcome to kind of you know correct me on things in the comments you're more than welcome to give me advice or give me um, ideas for videos and things like that. And if you have any questions about resources for books and videos and things like that, you can always ask me in the comments and I will always get back to you guys. I always 100% of the time get back to my comments. So I really hope that this helped some of you guys who came here um, genuinely trying to learn something. I really hope that this helped cleared up some things for those of you guys who might have seen my old video and still were a little on the fence about what it is that I said or why I said it. Or even if you guys saw my old video, which was, um, you know, the truth about tarot and divination work. Um, I personally, from my own experience, have an understanding that when you are communicating with beings outside of yourself that clearly uh, a channel or a portal has to be opened in order for that communication it's kind of like picking up the telephone and calling them right um, but apparently the verbiage of saying things like portals or entities or things like that might kind of freak out some beginners who don't quite understand what it is i'm talking about so um i you know i have no intentions of any harm or you know trying to freak out any beginners or things like that but i want you to understand that if you made it this far in the video and you're really freaked out about doing tarot or you're really freaked out about any type of divination, any type of magic work, things like that, maybe it's not for you right now. Maybe you can sit on it for a little while. Maybe you can just read some books about it for a little while because that's what I did for a good long time before I start jumping into anything was just keep reading, just keep researching, just keep learning, and it will definitely help you understand where you want to go with this and if it is something that you want to pursue okay so i really hope that wherever you guys are when this video reaches you my friends you have a beautiful wonderful day don't forget to check out my links in the description box you can hit my link tree and just see everything and i can't wait to see you guys in the next one namaste